Welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network, coming to you from the TeacherCast studios since 2011. Join us each week as we bring you the latest educational news, ed tech updates, and hottest interviews with today's most influential leaders in education. And now, for your host, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and welcome to Digital Learning Today. Have you been thinking about going back to school? Perhaps you're looking for career advancement. Perhaps you're looking to change school districts and looking to get a little bit more out of that salary guide. On today's episode, we have a fantastic episode for you. Today, we're going to be talking to Monica Carson, the Chief Growth Officer at the American College of Education, all about how you can advance your career, get a new degree, and possibly earn a brand new certificate. So stick around for our episode today. It's one you don't want to miss. I hope you've had an opportunity over the last few weeks to check out the brand new teacher cast. Lots of great things have been going up on the website. More than 100 new blog posts have been up. All of our podcasts are in the process of going up. And we've been launching new landing pages for our educational podcasting, our student classroom podcasting, our branding, marketing, and productivity channels, and of course, a lot of new content coming out over on our Ask the Tech Coach Network. Check out all the great stuff that's happening over on TeacherCast today. My guest today is the Chief Growth Officer for the American College of Education, and today she's here to talk all about different opportunities that educators have if they want to pursue additional degrees and certifications. Monica, welcome to TeacherCast. How are you today? I am great, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It is so great to have you. We've had an opportunity to catch up over the last few weeks. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about what you're doing these days and talk to us a little bit about the American College of Education. Yeah, I would love to. Um, So the American College of Education was actually founded almost 20 years ago. Uh, We were founded and established as a teacher's college. It was a a group of educators that came together and said, we want to create a college for teachers, by teachers, with the core of the mission around really three primary things. Um, One being high quality, which we can speak to with regards to our retention rates and our graduation rates being well over 85%. Uh, Two being accessibility, uh, meaning that we are a fully online program so that educators can really think about how they fit it into their crazy days and their busy lives. Um, And then the third component was really built around affordability. So the goal that our degree programs could actually fit into an educator's budget so that they could reap the returns on their investment as you think about uh, educators' progression, right? As you think about lane change and stepping into leadership roles, ultimately designing a program that could fit into an educator's budget that they could almost, you know, instantly see the return on their investment as they think about their career, career growth and trajectory. Um, since, you know, we were founded almost 20 years ago, we're, we're trying to keep up with the needs of the education landscape. And so, you know, we have now a wide variety of, of programs, well over 60 programs that are designed to support the educator from a para pro all the way up to district administration. So bachelor's degrees to doctoral degrees. Um, and really just thinking about what the educators needs are as they think about continuing to um, increase their skills, increase their practice, and ultimately support them through the trajectory of, of a, an education. Being a lifelong, lifelong educator, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it. Well, let's talk a little bit about these options today. And of course, for more information on, on the college, you can head on over to ACE. Edu. And, you know, Monica, it wasn't too long ago, um, you know, the pandemic was almost over and I had this urge to advance my career a little bit. I was an instructional coach and I kind of had my sights set a little bit, uh, you know, bigger than where they currently were. And I made that decision to go back to school. And that wasn't an easy decision, one that I'd certainly had to sit down and talk to my to my family about, especially the kids going, you know, daddy's not going to be around as much. Let's get through this. It's going to take some time. Talk to us a little bit about some of the opportunities here. Why would a teacher want to go back and pursue a a, a secondary degree, a thirdary degree, or a certification process? Yeah, you know, I think that's a great question, Jeff, and I'd love to lean into your experience and your why as as we talk today. But I think for us, 
right? As you think about furthering your education, you've got that that you've got that different trajectory, right? Of an educator, um, you know, there's those there, those the, those individuals that just want to continue to refine their teaching practice and and be a leader in the classroom, right? And so we we've designed a a degree program that's for teacher leadership, right? And it's for that educator who is specifically wanting to just focus on their classroom and enhance their skill set. Um, you've got others in the profession that are thinking about what's that next path and or step for me in regards to true leadership, right? And so we as an organization have a master's degree in educational leadership that's designed for people that want to become principals. Um, you've got individuals who just want to become subject matter experts in the area in which they serve. STEM, special education, literacy, instruction, technology, right? I can keep going down the list and, you know, we've designed programs specifically for those individuals that want to focus on a specific area or expertise. Um, and then you have those that want to, to think about the, the long-term goal of moving into district administration, right? And a lot of those roles and responsibilities require that you have the, the terminal degree. Um, we call it the EDD. And so we've really been intentional about thinking about that educator um, ladder, right? We have a visual that we use from time to time when we're having conversations, but it's it's about making sure from a professional standpoint that we have all of the different degree programs that align for those individuals throughout their career. And I think because of the fact we were founded as a teacher's college, um, we've taken the educator profession into our approach as you think about the design of our curriculum for the institution, as you think about the way that the program's structured, it's been designed so that it can fit into the educator's life. Um, and so I, I actually put the question back on you, Jeff, as you thought about, you know, as you made that decision going back into a program, what were some of the things that you took into consideration when thinking about choosing your degree program? Well, for me, I wanted to make sure that there was some kind of an administrative cert to it. And I originally was from New Jersey. And in New Jersey, they actually have two different certs. There was a supervisor cert, and then there was a principal cert, and there were two different platforms. Um, so in New Jersey, I got my supervisor cert, which was 12 credits, and that was it. Um, in Connecticut, where I am, they have a, a different program where it's one all-encompassing admin cert, which is, I think, 24 credits. So my original idea for going back to school was to go in to get my admin cert. While I was there, I said, okay, if I'm going to go get the 24, I'm just going to keep going up the, up the pathway here. And I actually ended with my certificate of leadership, um, which was 30 credits. And so that not the, in Connecticut, they call it a six-year degree. And yeah. so with all of that, not only does that give you the admin certificate, but it also gives you the extra step on the, on the guide, but it also looks really cool on your wall hanging up next to everything else. I, I wanted to ask you here because I noticed that when I was in my program, it wasn't just educators, right? We had people from every angle of the school district, from paraprofessionals that were seeking teaching degrees that needed to take some of those leadership credits to also people who were in those, you know, a principal, assistant principal roles who were looking to get their super superintendent certifications. And so they were in those programs too. I would imagine that a good program, if you're looking for it anywhere in the country, is going to be able to service any type of educator and provide that program to get them to where they want to be. Yeah, no, that that is that's a, in fact the the case, right? I mean, I think the reality is is that there's so much crossover between what's happening from a practical standpoint, and if you think about the different levels, there is that opportunity to allow for different levels to be quite frankly engaged um, in programs that may not necessarily be dependent upon one another, right? So I think you know we see that here at ACE as well, to where you've got. Um, you've got courses that are shared amongst programs because I think one, it gives us the opportunity to allow for that, let's call it cross pollination, right? Between different roles and responsibilities so that you are learning from one another, right? That can help inform your practice, that can help inform how you support, right? Others within a, a K-12 system. Um, it allows for that, you know, kind of cross pollination across the different programs. But then too, I think to your point, um, as you think about some of the courses that you take, you took, right, within 
your degree program or your certificate program, there's an element that if you decide to go back and or just decide to pursue a different subject matter, you potentially can lean in on those credits and apply that to a, a future program as well, right? And so I think our goal too at ACE is, is we've really been intentional about the design of our program. And so we have everything from a micro credential, which is typically nine credits all the way up right to our doctoral degree. And we've designed it so that there's stackability in mind that if someone's coming to us and just wants to do that nine credits to support the, you know, their lane change or their progression, they can. But then let's decide they, they, they want to come back in a couple of years. They can leverage that learning to a future certificate or to a future master's degree or to a doctoral program because the way that we've really been intentional about stacking our programs so that learners can maximize the work that they're doing. You know, one of the questions that I had while I was starting my program was the was the big one. How? How am I going to do this? Right. I was a full time professional. Uh, you know, during the day I'd come home and I have all my teacher cast work. And then I have this thing that I do called being a triplet dad. How are you going to now fit in a degree program? And the pr program that I was in happened to have two different physical campuses and they also had an online program. And I was in that, you know, coming out of the pandemic world where, you know, some of the courses were on campus A, which was an hour and a half away. Some of them were on campus B, which was an hour and a half in a different direction. And then some of them during the week were stay at home and right. get them all done. And again, you know, we're talking two to three hour long courses of sitting here. A, it's difficult to be in a position where you're stuck at home online and then your kids are around. And it's even a harder thing to say to your spouse, I'm going to go away for a couple of times a week. Talk to us a little bit about how ACS is supporting people who have... Uh, you know, busy outside, you know, busy lives, I should say. Yeah. So I think um, ACE is, is doing a, it, it has done it and approached it very thoughtfully. Right. And so one of the things, you know, being founded by a group of educators, like I said, almost 20 years ago, we'll celebrate our 20 year anniversary in 2025 is that we know exactly what you just described, Jeff, with regards to your daily, you know, your daily commitment as a, as an educator your life commitment, right, outside of your role as an educator and just life, right, that there, there's that element that we have to take into consideration. And so the program has intentionally been designed for that thought in mind. Um, a couple of ways that we're able to structure our, our curriculum and our approach is that, you know, we have basically our programs are designed so that you're taking, if we're thinking about master's level, certificate level at, or at the undergraduate level, our learners are taking one class at a time every five weeks with a week off in between. Um, and I think the important element of the way that that structure plays out is that within that five week period, we also have designated times in regards to not times, but days where discussion questions are due, where assignments are due. And so you as a learner are able to get into a rhythm that you know what to expect. So let's just say, for example, you know your discussion questions are due on Wednesday and your assignments are due on Sunday. You as an individual can then determine where it fits best into your schedule. Sometimes we see educators using their, their um, planning periods, right? They get their work done for their classroom and they have a little bit of extra time. They'll spend their time doing their research or their discussion questions. Or we'll see educators, you know, in their day, late in the evenings, after the kids are in bed, they'll do their work in the evenings or they'll get started early in the morning. Um, you have some instances to where they, you know, save most of their work for their weekends, right? Um, we've given the platform and the structure so that there is a level of expectation that the learner knows going in what to expect and so they can build it into their schedule. Um, I think that the five weeks on with a week off also gives a little bit of breathing room too that educators can build it into their just their life schedule right um we also offer i would say some flexibility in regards to scheduling so if educators want to speed up they can double up to get their program done you know in a shorter condensed period of time a lot of times we'll see our educators double up during the summer so that then maybe they can take a a break off a five-week session off because of the fact that they know in the month of October, they're, you know, doing their full time duty as an educator and then they have something else that's within the, the scope of the district that they're, you know, they're involved in. And so 
what we've tried to do is make the program really um, flexible so that educators, one, know what to expect, but then two, have that flexibility that if they need to speed things up and or slow things down, they can. And I think that's important, right? Making sure that it's at your speed. I, I know for myself, uh, I, I put myself on a timetable. I did 30 credits in a year plus a summer. And that was with me saying, look, I, you know, this is important to me, but also being a dad, right? Like at the right. time, my kids were eight and they were nine, they're, they're 10 now. And I wanted to make sure that all of my schooling was behind me before they hit their ages where they are now. So I'm excited that I had the chance to finish that off because now I'm excited that I get a chance to, to have the time with them on here. But it was also about making sure that financially I could handle this. You know, I had to take out loans. I had to make sure that my current student loans were on forbearance. I had to make sure that although, you know, I could still pay for my mortgage and my car payments and stuff yeah. like that. Talk to me a little bit about the financial side because not everybody is able to do 64 credits, 30 credits, all on one thing. Loans are still real, right? Yeah. And so I think that that's part of the the third tenant, right, of the mission of, of ACE was really we were founded so that we could fit into an educator's budget. Um, the unique thing about ACE as an institution is, is we have opted to not participate in federal financial aid. Um, but if we have educators who come to us with existing loans that want to defer their loans, they have that ability to do so. Um, the intentional design behind our tuition, right? If you think about our overall tuition for, let's say, our master's program, um, our master's programs run all in total cost just under $10,000. And so the way that we have been able to do it so that educators can fit it into the budget is, is that our learners pay as they go. They pay one course at a time, right? Every five, every five weeks. And so if you think about that, we've broken it down in a way that could fit into a monthly budget. Um, so let's just take a, 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 a round number, right? So let's say $800. Um, you know, it's eight, approximate $800 for one course. And so if you divide that by, you know, two months, that's $400 each month. Um, and so the goal and the spirit has been that we have been able to, you know, we haven't raised our tuition since 2016. Um, and that is really with the educator in mind that we want to make it affordable. We want to set our educators to come out with little to no debt. 85% of our learners have no debt when they finish their program. And it's because of the design and, and the way that we operate as, a, as an institution. Everything that we do, every decision that we make is with the with our learner top of mind in, in ways that we can continue to ensure that we're returning the cost savings back to the learner so that we're setting them up for success. Because ultimately, as we know, for educators, as you continue to progress on your, your continuous learning, right, you're going to see an immediate return on that investment. And by the way that we've structured our program, our educators are seeing that immediate return. One of the other things that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention who's listening to this is, you know, this is your education. This is something that is important to you. This is something that's going to be hanging on the wall. This is something that you can be able to put on that resume, obviously. Now, when you're looking for that program, it's important to partner with an institution that has the right program for you. Yeah. Um, and that's and, and, and ACE has really been, you know, one of those one of those institutions that, you know, we hone in on the professions in which we serve. Um, educators being the, the core, and we've expanded into into nursing and healthcare and a little bit of business. But even at that, the intent is is that all of our degree programs are really serving those who serve. Um, and so, you know, with that in mind, as we think about our educators, we have almost every program that you could you could imagine in regards to the career trajectory. Right, as I mentioned earlier, from para pro all the way up to district administration, we've really been intentional about ensuring that for the majority, we've got a program that can meet an educator's needs. Let's talk about some of those programs because you guys have a pretty cool STEM program. Talk to us a little bit about that. We do, we do. Um, you know, that, that program has been around for some time um, and it came through really as we started to see STEM education take off. Uh, gosh, I, I've been with ACE o over 10 years and it was pretty early on in my my tenure at the institution that you know more and more emphasis was was coming with regards to STEM, and so we partnered with the the National Institute of STEM Education 
um, they, they created a certificate. And we quickly realized that, that that certificate needed to be built into a master's degree program for those that really wanted to put that emphasis in STEM education. And so we quickly responded to, to what the market was saying, right? And that's why we inten intentionally listen, learn and lean in to make sure that we've got the relevant programs for our educators. Um, and that's just one example of where I would say that that was, it was pretty early on that we knew we needed to find um, find a program that would meet the needs for those that were wanting to continue to enhance their skill in STEM education. Um, and we quickly did so. And I think that that also is an example too of where we're trying to maximize work from a credit for prior learning perspective because learners may have went to the National Institute of STEM Education and got their certificate and didn't realize that it could feed into a master's degree, right? And so if we think about the mission of ACE and our ability to provide high quality, accessible and affordable education, someone who's already completed six credits, right, with a certificate, that's six less credits that they're gonna have to do at American College of Education. And so we're not only returning some cost savings to them, but we're also returning some time to them as well because that's six less credits they'd have to complete into our master's program. And honestly, that's how I was able to do it in a year plus a summer because I had those 12 credits from New Jersey that weren't into an actual program, they were able to bring those into uh, mine, and I, I was able to, you know, transfer six credits over and and finalize everything quickly. But it's not just the STEM program that I was interested in. You and I had a good conversation a few weeks ago about your technology and your digital learning degrees. Yeah, and so at ACE, um, we are doing really. If you think about anything tech related, we're trying to keep up. Right? We know we know that it's. It's ever evolving. There's changes happening all the time. And that's one area where we're really trying to put an emphasis on making sure that our programs have the right content and the right relevancy to ensure that we're supporting educators along their journey. And I think it goes back to, right, if you think about what is your next step, right? Because one thing that we want to ensure is that we're keeping more folks in the profession. At the end of the day, we know that as as a as an as a entity, right, we're seeing more people leaving the profession, we're seeing more people not coming into the profession. And the reality is, is we've got to put our arms around educators within the system to help enhance their learning and to help their enhance their skill set to continue to leverage that subject matter expertise. Um, and so, you know, our program is recognized, right? Our MED and educational technology um, is recognized by ISTE. Um, you know, it was created with that goal to make sure that we're meeting the technology requirements. And so we're very intentional about trying to ensure that we're keeping our curriculum up to date so that no matter what what trajectory a learner is, is choosing to go on, we have a complementary program that matches their needs from ed tech to curriculum and instruction to instructional design and technology. Um, as we just talked about STEM special ed, literacy. I mean, again, I could keep going down the list, but we've been very intentional about that approach to enhance the skill set and or help an educator in their journey throughout their career. Monica, if somebody wants to learn more about ACE, where can they go to learn more? So the quickest way would be to go to ace.ace.edu um, would be the best place to start. We have all of our programs, um, you know, spelled out on our website that will give you everything from program details to courses to some of our featured faculty, uh, the admissions requirements, that's going to be the best place to start. But of course, if they have specific questions, um, we're also very intentional about the support of our learners. And so we have a dedicated team of enrollment counselors that are readily available um, that they can call into. They can call 1-800-280-0307 to speak to an enrollment counselor directly, or they can also just request information through our website and or we also have a live chat feature um, that they can they can talk to an enrollment counselor to get all their questions answered. Monica, I want to say thank you so much for stopping by. As you know, that this conversation is important to me. If it wasn't for my you know trajectory going back to school, I wouldn't be able to bring some of the opportunities that I've had to my family over the last couple of years. If you're looking to talk about this conversation, please let me know. You can reach out to us over at TeacherCast. You can find us over at Feedback at TeacherCast and let us know what you think about this. If you're going back to school, if you're thinking about going back to school, highly recommend it. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Monica, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Jeff. It was my pleasure. I had so much fun. 
and I hope you guys enjoyed this show. On behalf of Monica and everybody here on TeacherCast, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to the TeacherCast Educational Network, hosted by Jeff Bradbury. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at TeacherCast or online at www.teachercast.net. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.